Do you remember Jojo Siwa? You yell at me, I'm gonna cry. If you watch my channel, you've probably, you probably know her. Huge fan of Jojo Siwa on the channel. This girl, this singer, people love clowning on Jojo Siwa because she's cringe. Last few weeks, the internet has definitely made me feel like a fucking psychopath. And no one's going to argue with that. She is definitely cringe. Jojo Siwa, definitely very, very, very cringe. Bruh. Today's video is sponsored by Fume. And yes, I do get made fun of for doing these ads. And yes, I do. I know. But guess what? I don't care. Cold turkey! Something about cold turkey as your might be your go-to actor Thanksgiving, but not when you're breaking bad habits, guys. You can use today's sponsor, Fume, to knock those negative habits out of your life. I love this one. It's like, uh, I think this one's orange vanilla. It's my favorite one. It's no electronics, no vapor, just pure unadulterated flavor. <laughs> yeah. The Fume comes with this little adjustable airflow thing. It's a, it's a, it's multi-purpose. It's incredible incredibly fun to just mess with it and also it's good to suck on and if you've got a vice it's the perfect device to uh yeah i went off script there sorry also today we're talking about the base this thing's as functional as it is fun it's perfect for those who like to keep their hand busy i will say that i was skeptical at first i like making fun of pretty much everything but fume is cool i like fume i've given fume to a lot of people that i know and and bought it as a gift for a lot of people it's cool the crisp mint flavor delicious it's a sensation it's more than just a taste and the designs of these little bad boys, I love wood and I love metal. You know, guys, it's a simple, it's a simple fit for the channel. Go to tryfume.com forward slash Oompaville or scan the QR code, use code Oompaville, whatever. Click the link in the description. Do it all. It supports the channel and you get 10% off your order of Fume, a longtime sponsor of the channel. Fume is more than just a product. It's a movement. The crazy thing in the news recently, guys, and I'm talking big news publications are picking up on this. Big ones, all right? Remember how JoJo used to be? All right, here we go. It's cupcake time. We watched her grow up. Check out the new JoJo Bowmaker by Coolmaker. You can make and remake double bows or single bows. There's just three easy steps. Get her own line of toys, makeup, and more. Well, now she's changed. <laughs> and it's f***ing... It's really weird now. It's very strange, and I'm torn. I might be an even bigger fan of Jujisawa. All right, guys? I don't know yet. We're gonna see. A lot of people absolutely think she is completely insufferable, and by God, I tell you what, I do as well. But we're gonna look into it, and I'm going to be your unbiased source of the news for today's video. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shut up, bitch. This all began 184 years ago with a spin-off of the show called Dance Moms. Walk, 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 woo-hoo! Smaller steps, wah -ah! One, two, three, woo-hoo! This show was called Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. Dancing with Q as a choreographer is really, really fun. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, yes. What's that? Why do we care? Well, we don't. You sure about that? You sure about that? But we will for just a minute for this video. Please! Josie Wa was best known for her personality and her signature bow tie in the ponytail. Here in this little pool, I have tons of bows and every single one of them has a question from one of you guys attached to it. She's sort of a Tucker Carlson of <laughs> small girls who can dance on shitty TV shows. M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. Until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. That's the goal. When you're totally turned off, we've achieved equity. She continued the bow tie thing for a long time throughout her life, by the way. And by God, I tell you what, if I did that bow tie thing right there, my hairline would be here. All right, guys? If I spent like eight years of my life just with my hair... <laughs> No hate, by the way, you know, no hate, no hate. Oh, never mind, actually. It seems like she has opened up about her hair loss. I don't know if that's because of the extremely tight bow tie or if it's a Jada Pinkett Smith situation where she has alopecia or whatever. She says she's very hard on herself. That's not good. Don't be hard on yourself. You're a person just like me. And I wouldn't be hard on myself. I like to talk to myself as if I'm communicating with my inner child. And the topic of this video is gonna be 
We're going to talk about our first dipping experiences. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm a huge bully to myself. Just like Jojo Seo, me and her have that in common. So I don't know if it's that or if it's stress or whatever. My hair is gray from stress. So we can, uh, we have that as a similarity between the two of us. I'm sort of the Jojo Siwa of YouTube. King Crab Oompa has decided that I shall ingest you because you ingested my bone. After reaching a modicum of fame, Jojo Siwa moved to Nickelodeon where all child stars end up. And this is kind of post Dan Schneider. So it's a much healthier era, it seems like of child stars, but just giving a child stardom in general, not a good idea. This isn't The Sims, okay? Life isn't just a linear path. There's a lot of ooh, shit that can go wrong and a lot of awareness you need to maintain throughout your life to be a good person. Needless to say, being on Nickelodeon would absolutely catapult Jojo Sawa's career to the stars. She became a massively relevant <laughs> girl. I don't, she really didn't. That's very exaggerative. She was pretty famous though. She even made a cameo in my favorite movie called Blurt. That's right, I'm a huge Blurt fan. I love you, sis. Don't blow it. Also, Bizarre Vark with Jake Paul. Pretty baller. <laughs> like a boomerang. Nickelodeon fell off to a level that I just really can't even comprehend, bro. I love SpongeBob. I love all that shit. Clone Wars. Along with her newfound big time fame on Nickelodeon, JoJo would find a great deal of opportunity in this. She took the YouTuber route and began making music to try out her talent because she knew how to dance already. I mean, she's very good. Why not combine that with singing a la Britney, a la Miley Cyrus, a la Elvis? I don't fucking know. People dance and sing at the same time all constantly. This is when she made her big, real actual big break. She had a song called Boomerang that has a fucking billion views now somehow. I'ma come back like a boomerang. Like a boom around. Who let this kid sing? Who let this child sing? Who let this kid on here? What the f? You know what I was doing when I was seven years old? Digging holes. I would catch a fish every now and then and I would put it under a rock where ants were and see what would happen. I was kind of a scientist. What the f? This blew her career up though. It was massive. She decided to make some more music as one does and gave her hand at some YouTube content creation, which we know. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> that's my wheelhouse. Hey everyone, it's Jojo. YouTube you guys, today I am so excited because it is finally time for my brand new bedroom makeover. And she babysat Northwest, Kanye West's son. All right, Northy, what do you want to do? You want to make fun? You want to go see my room? You want to play with Bobo? You want to go see my room first? It's pretty fun. It's upstairs. Whoa! Zomj Pop. Is this Jojo Siwa's channel? The fuck is Zomj Pop? I guess this used to be her channel. Now it's Zomj Pop. It's probably XOMG and I'm just fucking dumb. So I say Zomj. Zomj, my favorite channel, guys. Next to CMT. Rest in peace, Toby Keith. May God rest your soul. Now this nation that I love is falling under attack. Except for all those dollars you made as a propagandist. Brought to you courtesy of the red, white, and blue. By the way, looking at Zomj Pop, makes me angry looking at this dude makes me actually angry looking at this she got more i assume they're all children views so they don't count but like how many views for doing what i mean come on millions of views per videos millions she would collab with some big names such as miranda sings my favorite groomer <laughs> i don't know i don't know dude has that been proven yet in, in a court of law i'm not sure i apologize all allegations whatever needless to say jojo was hitting it hard with the vlog content and the and the not gaming not not gaming content music content her channel was growing massively she's a natural she's just she's built for the spotlight and yeah she did collab with colleen ballinger quite a few times and miranda sings i think i'm not really sure the difference i'm starting to think they're the same person i don't know though i don't know do you guys know tell me down below i farted like 800 <laughs> Time. Like, 800! Not over exaggerated. It's good content. I do the same thing, but I like to go, oh! When I fart, I go, oh! Like it hurts me bad. And then everyone around me gets very concerned. And then they say, what happened? What happened? I say, I just stepped on a barking spider and it injected me with his venom. Today we're going to be making slime because why not? I need a teacher how to make it. Last time I taught her how to dance. She tried to teach me how to dance. It worked. I it did teach you how to dance. Okay, okay. It's bullshit how many views that has. 60 million six years ago? That's bullshit. What? 
What kind of platform does she have? So blowing up understatement. She got shit in Target. She got so much. I, 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 I don't even remember her being that famous, but she was apparently. To be honest, not her age group, not her demographic. I was sad driving around in my car in the middle of Appalachia listening to Tyler Childers. Uh, Tyler Childers. I'm all yours. And the people around me, little did I know, were listening to JoJo. She was so popular at the time, John Cena introduced her at the Kids' Choice Awards. That is like an Oscar for just mouth breathers. Make some noise for JoJo C. Wow! Dude, what is this shit? I don't even know what the f*** is going on. It hurt, that hurt my brain. I feel like an apostle of Jesus Christ watching that, and not just any apostle. Judas. I brought you frankincense. Thank you. And I brought you myrrh. Thank you. Murder. <laughs> Judas. Bruh. I just kind of don't get it, I guess. It's kind of like something I just don't get it. I like to imagine. Ever been to Target? There we go. Jojo Siwa had a line of toys dedicated to herself. That's awesome. How much money does she have? Jojo Siwa net worth it's got to be so much money 20 million you got a toy line what the f i what the f that's crazy there's no way it's 20 mil it's got to be more it's got to be weird as a kid growing up and just seeing like lines and aisles of target dedicated to you quite literally however the age of toys for jojo siwa would soon come to an end and a tide of controversy would come in. With that came cancellation. Jujasawa released a makeup line in Claire's, that place where young people go to get their ears pierced at malls and shit, I think. It was contaminated with asbestos. Big L, to be honest. Absolutely not her fault at all, but that's just something that happens and it cannot be good for the brand to have something contaminated with anything, really. It's just bad. It does happen. It does happen. And it also happened to be a product that was marketed towards young girls, which is like an extra bad look. But uh, earnestly, that, you know, that happens. If you're not manufacturing something yourself, it's impossible to, to tell exactly what's going into it. And even then, there's a lot of moving parts. Just to give her the benefit of the doubt, this is what happens when you have products. Things will go wrong. And obviously, like with other child stars, behind them all is an incredibly mentally ill old person living vicariously through them. She did a good job last week. She did a solo, you poured blood on her, you put a four inch crown on her head. She did a good job. Keep telling her. She Keep did a good her. job. She did a good job. Keep telling I'm her. telling you. JoJo Siwa and her mom created a reality TV-esque show dedicated to creating a pop band called Siwa's Dance Pop Revolution. That's right, guys. My fucking brain is melting. It's turning into a soup liquefying inside of me. I've got the bins in my prefrontal cortex. Bad plan, by the way. I don't even know what the f anything is. And I know Dance Moms it was just an excuse for insane parents to yell at their children and make them turn out weird. Please call your attorney. These they're doing this again. But this show promised to bring some uh, girls fame and it, they eventually had a pop band crew and it did terrible. I, th I assume it turned into Zomj pop, potentially. I think, I'm thinking that's probably where this is going. Now already we know this is a terrible, awful, horrible plan. Dance Moms, bad idea. All these pageant kids, it never works out. It's just a bad, sickening environment. But this show <laughs> was supposed to be different. It was... It was a promise of getting girls fame and fortune and eventually building out a pop band crew. Sort of like Simon Cowell meets some random woman from Tennessee. I don't know. I'm not really sure. According to Rolling Stone in regard to the TV show, things weren't going very well. The Sandersons, as well as multiple sources close to the production, alleged that she was subjected the children to grueling rehearsals, sometimes foregoing school breaks, with meager compensation. They also allege Sanderson was forced to work under intense physical duress, with Jezelyn encouraging her to attend a video shoot just a few weeks after she underwent spinal cord surgery. In one instance, just days before the surgery. Holy f***ing shit. That's not good. I'm starting to see why people don't necessarily like Jojo Siwa that much. By the way, that's where Zomj comes from, just in case you weren't aware. I like to 
go into little parts of the video and pretend to be naive as if I'm you, as if I'm a viewer learning and watching. But in reality, I am like Stromboli from the ancient story of Pinocchio, pulling the string. I'm creating the psyop, leading you to potentially believe that you may in fact be a real boy with autonomous thoughts and feelings. But in reality, you're just in my shop and I'm toying with you and extracting every dime you have. Go to sour.gg and sign up for the candy. We have two launches coming this week. One Friday, all right, guys? A small one you'll probably miss. It'll sell out in an hour, most likely. And then another one Monday that's going to be a little bit bigger. Friday and Monday. Okay, this Friday. Uh, it's April 15th right now. What is the f***ing Friday? Friday the 19th, Monday the 22nd of April, 2024. Go to sour.gg. Oh, give us your email, too. We send out an email the moment it goes live, so you'll get, you'll get the candy. And there's no asbestos in it yet. I'm sure that will happen eventually. Human error, et cetera, et cetera. When you start to open the fucking FDA rabbit hole, guys, woo! So the reference to the Sandersons and the little Rolling Times excerpt I showed a moment ago is in regard to one of the contestants, Leah Sanderson. Hi, my name is Leah Sanderson, and I'm a dancer and singer with Spina Bifida. So I'm here today to answer some frequently asked questions. She suffered from a condition called Spina Bifida. It's a terrible congenital birth defect. It's fucking awful. It's a problem that starts with the neural tube. The top of the tube forms the brain. The bottom of the tube forms the spinal cord and the structures that surround it. When the neural tube at the bottom doesn't form properly, then the bones that cover the spinal cord don't form properly either. There's a, an opening or defect in the lower back through which the spinal cord and the, and the spinal nerves that come from the spinal cord are exposed. And that results in damage to those structures. Basically your spinal cord fails to develop properly and it leads to all sorts of problems and requires intervention at multiple points of the person who has afflicted life. In spite of this, Leah had a passion for dance and pushed through to make her dreams come true, and she did so in Zomg Pop, that world. If it's your last week, just do the best you can. That's all you can do. Go dance good. She alleged that during rehearsals and filming Jessalyn, by the way, Jessalyn is JoJo Siwa's mom. She was overly cruel and would shame her for having a birth defect and a disability, ableist. The mom, like, I feel like, you know, I know Dallas didn't get a part in the first song, but she got a bigger part than Kim Lee. I just kept thinking about the industry people there, that's all, and how I just want her to... To be noticed. Yeah. To, yeah. I get I, it. I, I, like, my kid is good. Like, she's just not as good as Justin Kyle. People on Reddit call me ableist because I sometimes refer to people as being autistic. I myself am autistic. This is actually ableist. Point your lasers at this person. For the first time, Angie and Leah Sanderson are speaking out, talking exclusively to the Rolling Stone about their almost two-year stint in Zomj Pop. They allege that Jessalyn was overtly cruel to their young charges, calling them names, and in one instance, shaming them for having a disability. The contestant who was the target of the alleged verbal abuse did not return Rolling Stone's request for comment. Jojo, meanwhile, could also be nasty and domineering. According to sources, a sharp contrast from her upbeat on-screen persona. At one point, they allege she screamed insults at the girls during a performance. They also allege that she played a role in helping to build a cutthroat environment long after the cameras were gone, playing favorites and pitting members against each other. Lord of the Flies! Demons! Demons! Blow them up! Blow them up! Sorry, Frankie. Sorry, baby girl. Yeah, this is all evil. Everything I talk about on my channel, I believe is inherently evil. That's why I can talk about it and make money off of it because it's bad. It's all bad, right? Right, guys? It's fun to talk about this stuff. These people are evil. Gojo was a nasty bitch. Okay, big surprise. Big surprise. Of course. Have you seen her? Have you seen the way she trots around, dude? I don't care if she's young and was a child star. You can be young and a child star and a victim of your upbringing and still be a nasty bitch. Hopefully. She changes. It's like Justin Bieber. Dude was a massive piece of shit when he was like nine years old. <laughs> I think. I don't know. I don't fucking know. He had that song called Lonely. What if you had it all? It leads me to believe that he was a massive piece of shit. No, oh, oh, only. I do think Justin Bieber is very, very, very extremely talented. By the way, I like Justin Bieber. He seems like a cool guy. I don't know though. I've never actually met him. This Zomj pop thing was so cutthroat. 11 girls were on the show and seven passed and would join the band. So they like cut them out boot camp style. 
Bud style. Hell week is three weeks into first phase. What I mean by mental toughness, I mean don't just do the 42 minimum push-ups for the PST. You have to realize you're doing hundreds upon hundreds of sets of push-ups at Bud's. In spite of seven of them passing, only four of them really got to shine as they're the ones on the Zomj podcast thing, the fucking sparkly uh, aneurysm room. This room will literally give me a brain bleed if I look at it any longer. So let's move on. So I don't really know what's going on, but it seems like only four. They're the only ones that show up in recent dance videos. I assume something horrible happened behind the scenes and there was there was payoffs, I don't know. Dallas, Penelope, Brooklyn, and Tinny T. For the love of God and all things holy, stay safe. Stay safe out there. Blur their faces, I don't even wanna see them. Don't put them on my channel. Don't put them on my channel. They get too many views anyways. They must have forcibly retired the other members to a gulag in Oklahoma, most likely. We did a small amount of research and it seems like four of them left and uh, they were only three, so they had to hire another one on. They brought another one on, which is, that makes sense. If you lose that many people out of your group in that short of a period of time, something's gotta be rotten. Something's gotta be rotten in Kislev. <laughs> Warhammer reference for all you Warhammer heads out there. You autists. I'm gonna get called an ableist as well for that comment. Sorry. I'd say shut it down though. If I had to give some professional advice, one YouTuber to another, an apostle to the Messiah, I would say shut it down. Shut it down, okay? Just just end it. You're not gonna get a Nickelodeon show. This doesn't work. This has 20,000 views. It's two weeks old. Bring back JoJo, let her hang out with Colleen. That's how we're gonna get views. Cause if not, shit's gonna get really weird really soon. And by the way, that's a spoiler because shit got extremely weird. Shit is really weird right now with JoJo Siwa. I'm sure you've seen it guys. I make videos by the way for the less informed people out there who don't live their lives watching shit all the time, or at least that's my intention. I'm sure a lot of you guys are online or whatever and you, you pay attention, but I'm the child soldier out there working my way out through just the shit, getting you guys the information you need. You don't need to be online. If, if you're watching my videos, you might get the information two weeks late, but you're gonna get all of it over a very extended period of time and it's gonna be good information sometimes. <laughs> Six out of 10 times, it's gonna be solid info. Tell all your friends, everything I say is matter of fact, you'll be fine. But do yourself a favor and just withdraw, all right? Go over there, go over there. I'll do this for you. So this is what Jojo C has been up to. Stealing music? Not really. Just kidding, but kind of. It's just how music works, though, it seems like. She recently, JoJo's been topping the charts with her new music, the song called Karma. The actual, the music does do very, very, very well. Karma's a bitch. I known this Karma song has a lot of conversation going around in regard to it online, and it's pretty f***ing cringe. We'll get into that, though. Okay, guys. Oh, my guys. Karma. Let's see Karma. I swear I did it all for fun. I don't know what I just watched, but I feel like I shouldn't have watched it. Jojo Siwa age. I think Jo, she's 20? What the f She's like 30 years old. Holy shit. I thought she was a child still. She looks like a fish. She looks like a damn sea creature. As a music head, I went and listened to this tune three times for you guys to break down this drama that's been going on. You really need to understand the source material fully in order to give well-formulated thoughts. A chef can't cook a, a five-star Michelin meal, three-star Michelin meal, without first tasting his ingredients. Now, surprisingly, the orifices on the sides of my head are not leaking blood, as I thought they were. The song is well-produced, it's well put together, and it's definitely what some people are looking for, that is for sure. Some people, not me, children, I assume, but the song is not about it's not a child song though, that's the problem. It's not my kind of music. It's not like a terrible song, but it is completely forgettable. Karma's a bitch! The music video is very weird, very cringe and strange. That's the worst part, is definitely the music video. Very hard to consume. Now you'd probably expect the song would be terrible like most pop music, and it is by the way, like compared to what I normally generally listen to, but overall it's, it's well produced, it's well made. And how is that possible? Well, guys, JoJo Siwa's been talking about the writing process in interviews all across the internet. And luckily, there's a show called How It Went Down for Billboard in which JoJo Siwa explains how it went down. She talks about the creative process behind her hit new song, Karma. Originally, I was scared of the lyrics. I was 18 years old. I didn't want to say bitch. I didn't want to say I was a bad girl because I wasn't a bad girl. Two years ago, when she was working on the song, she didn't want to say 
bitch or anything along those lines because she didn't want to label herself as a bad girl at the time because she wasn't. This sentiment is one she echoed in a podcast interview with Call Her Daddy, that podcast where they call her daddy. I'm not really sure what they do there. I got pitched this song, Karma, and it's the first word is, I was a bad girl, and I was like, oh, f it's a good song. I was like, but I can't say that. I can't say I'm a bad girl. I'm not. I'm not. I was 18, fresh off of my dream, the tour. And I was like, I can't say I, was, I, I sang every girl's a super girl last week. Like, I can't <laughs> sing I was a bad girl this week. It doesn't work. But this is her at age, age 18, I think. So a lot more rainbow colored and less neutral tones and a lot like younger, more looking. She's a lot more, um, I don't really know. She's like appealing to children, I think is like uh, blippy type shit. You know what I'm saying? It's very blippy coded. The way she talked about the song in these little interviews, talking about the creative process, it seems like something she really was working hard on and it's a true creative endeavor that any artist would try to fine tune over time. She didn't release it for two years. She was banking on it for a little while, okay guys? Of course, now is when she wanted to release the song, guys. Now, because people started noticing something quite particular. Something very strange, very particular. I was a bad girl. So boom, it comes out, it's a big hit. Why are people saying that it's not her song and that she stole, she stole it? Why are people saying that? Apparently people are fucking saying that and that is huge news right now. Apparently the song Karma, our new favorite tune, is 12 years old. She was like eight or some shit when this version came out. Different sound, different vibe, but it's basically the same song. Like, lyrically speaking, it's very, very, very similar. And it sounds like shit. It's, it's terrible. This song is really bad. I prefer the JoJo Siwa version, in all honesty. It's a victim of the era in which it was recorded. Just very 2010s pop. Oh, just, oh, what the f***? Why'd you make that? It's not like an 80s song, a 90s song. It's a 2010s song. Oh. I mean, when I hear any song from the 2010s. Oh. No. Or whatever. So this whole time, JoJo Siwa has been agonizing over the writing of the song and how she doesn't want to be this bad girl type thing. She was a bad girl and it's not even, it isn't even her song or something like that. I'm not really f***ing sure, dude. This whole thing is so confusing. It's really odd because JoJo even talks about there being different iterations of the song, different versions that they recorded. She says in her Billboard interview that the bridge of the song was flat and a single note and she wanted to, hey, what if, what if we added a little something to it, making it basically the Brit Smith song from 2012. If you listen to the first version of Karma, whole different song. The bridge, whole different bridge. The bridge basically the whole time was one note and it was really cool. But, but what if it kind of had this, you know, little bit of flow to it. Hey, a creative choice that's actually not a creative choice at all. Hey, let's take some creative liberties. And instead of doing that, let's just not. Let's just not take any creative liberties and let's just make the same song and call it Karma. That's ironic. And when I lay me down to sleep, it's not your body next to me. The only difference in the lyrics between Brit's version from 2012, which is terrible, and JoJo Siwa's from 2024, which is also terrible, guys. By the way, I was trying to be nice. The only difference is the following lyric. If I had a wish, I would have never messed around. That is 2012 Brit. I had a wish, I would have never messed around. In JoJo's version, the lyric is, if I had a wish, I would have never effed around. Damn. She didn't release the song two years ago because she wasn't a bad girl. All right, guys, she wasn't a bad girl. Woo! She was scared of cussing. It took her two years, took her 24 months to finally get the cojones to shout out that F. I wouldn't have effed around. Wow. This situation, in my opinion, completely unravels how blind these people, specifically Jojo Siwa in this video, how blind these people are to reality. You just say something that's not true and then just, it's fine. What? You live in a fantasy world. What the f going on here? We have another example of this. Another billboard clip. JoJo says there's never been an influencer child star who became a music adult star. There's never really been an influencer child star turned into musician adult star. You know what I mean? There's, there's never really been this transition. There's been similar. Never someone that was themselves that's making this 
boom jump transition to also themselves. You know what I mean? Uh, there is a lot of them though. That there's a lot of them though. Like Drake Bell, one example. People come just to go. Demi Lovato. Now I'm out here looking like revenge. Selena Gomez. Miley Cyrus. Just because she's, they're not like YouTube influencers doesn't mean they're massive. Also, Ariana Grande, dude. I mentioned Miley, by the way. I love Miley. I'm a huge Miley fan. Not a big fan of Hannah Montana, but I love Miley Cyrus. I think she's incredibly talented and I like the stuff that she does. JoJo's rebrand, quite reminiscent of Miley Cyrus rebrand, maybe with a lot more cringe potentially, but she released a thing called Wrecking Ball back in the day and it was like shock value because she was like a child star and stuff. I came in like a wrecking ball. And now JoJo C was doing the same thing and she's trying extremely hard to shock people and it's just not working. All right, guys, it's just not working. It's not organic. It's very cringe. It doesn't make any sense. She looks like a fish. She swims around in her suit and the outfit and her voice, everything about it is just, it's weird. It's very odd. And it seems disingenuous and fake and I don't know, laced with evil, like Hollywood exec evil. And if we go back to the Call Her Daddy interview, she even says that she wants her own Miley Cyrus bangers moment. Okay, guys, she wanted that desperately here for herself. Very awesome. When I was eight is when Miley had her bangers moment. Okay. And I was like, all I want is to have that one day. Like, I want that. And honestly, since I was like 15, like my whole like inner circle has been like talking about it and like getting excited for it. Hey, would I want to buy podcast or uh, I think I would spice it up a bit by X. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so she directly references Miley Cyrus and then just pulls out a, a revisionist history type beat and says that there's never been a child star who shifted to an adult star, but it's Miley Cyrus. I mean, she's quite literally just doing the same thing, but in a really bad, embarrassing, cringe way. What the f Okay, so are you ready for this to get even more fucking crazy? Because you're gonna need to put your tin foil hat on, your tin foil fat on for me, guys. Stick that little on there, turn your head into a Hershey kiss, okay? JoJo says that she saw Miley's change when she was eight years old which is how old she was when Brit Smith recorded Karma, the song that's causing all this stink. Come to find out, Karma was not originally written for Brit Smith. It was originally written for Miley Cyrus. This is like Jojo Siwa, Sniper Wolf, cannibalizing Azilane's image, Miley Cyrus, and then gaslighting everyone into believing that that's not true. I love it, guys. I love it. I'm a really big fan of this. Uh, I can buy myself flowers. Write my name in the sand. Talk to myself for hours. It's a bit of revisionism. It's a bit of tomfoolery. And it's a bit of just lying to the public en masse. Classic, classic creators. Classic content creators. This is just some cringe, by the way. Big song. I want you to listen for a very special ad lib. It's about one of my exes. And I will sure as hell point it out when that ad lib comes. Don't you worry. This next song is called Choose Your Fighter. It's about one of my exes. That's just like a thing. What, what are you saying? Why are you making stuff about your exes? One of my exes Dude, not enough gravel in that voice to be her. What the f? She got a voice like fucking Waylon Jennings. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Everyone was filming, so it obviously was get, getting out, gonna get out. It's very strange. By the way, this went viral because it's a song that wasn't even made by her, someone else. How, why do you not just write your own song? And she just bought it. She didn't write her own song. It's just another person's song, which is fine. That's pretty common. You can buy songs. That's why there's writing credits and shit like that. But at the same time, it's just like, the song's about my ex. By the way, I've never formed a cohesive thought. So not about her ex, unless there's some weird Emmeline Jojo love triangle we don't know about. Highly unlikely! Emmeline didn't even know she was gonna be putting out her song. Hi, 2024 fans, I'm gonna take with a story time. I didn't out of Jojo, not her fault. If I didn't get love, I can still put it out under her. Thank you for the support. Yeah, so Ghost Rider's very well-known, commonplace, 
Most of your favorite songs are probably written by someone else. Beyonce's Halo was written by the guy for One Republic, from One Republic. He wrote it in three hours, then gave it to Beyonce. She's with like a label, it happens, you know, I guess. She's, yeah, she also said that she's a psychopath though. So who the f knows? Who the f knows what's real? The last few weeks, the internet has definitely made me feel like I'm a fucking psychopath. But then I realized something. No, 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 no. I realized something. I am a psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. And this yeah. is some shit that only I can do. Yeah. I wouldn't say that out loud. Being a psychopath is not good. She loves chilling with other psycho, psycho, psychopaths, psychopaths as well. Colleen Ballinger. I'm really excited because I'm going to go to JoJo's release party. I'm also going to go to my friend Todrick's birthday party, and I'm really, really excited to see them. I haven't been to LA in a really, really long time. She's not a psychopath. She's just a vlogger, guys. She's just a YouTuber. YouTubers aren't psychopaths or sociopaths. They're normal people with con con consciences that are based in reality. They don't live in fantasy worlds. They're normal. They're normal people just like you. You, I'm not like you, I'm a psychopath. To further the self-alleged psychosis and apparent insane narcissism, we can circle back once again to her Call Her Daddy interview. She says that she'll never claim to be a singer, but she'll claim to be an artist because she's giving the world art. Like I said, I will never ever claim to be a singer, Yeah, but I will claim to be an artist. Okay. I am giving the world art and they might not like it, they might hate it, but they're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And it's become a bit of a guilty pleasure for everyone. Same, Jujutsuwa, same. People might not like it, they might hate it, but they're enjoying it. Oh. She's got the fucking Austin Powers hat. That's literally the Austin Powers hat. So anyways, guys, that is probably one of the most atrocious career shifts I've ever seen. Very strange. Originally, I didn't want to talk about this because I didn't know a lot about it. I thought it was just like child star who's gone mentally ill. And I was like, oh, that's kind of sad and sort of messed up. And, and you know, I feel bad for her or whatever. And then I started reading into it and I was like, ah, okay, yeah. We could, they could use some bullying. Few bullies, few couple bullying moments. I'm not sure. Maybe don't bully people with spina bifida, allegedly, or whatever. It's pretty toxic. Don't be toxic. Don't be a psychopath. I was a bad girl. No, you had four Kid Choice Awards. That's not bad girl stuff. That's like, seriously, not that cool. Also, dude, the outfits terrible all right guys i'm just a hater by the way i'm just that's all i am <laughs> anyways fellow c1s you want to see more c1 content comment down below